stage three of the tour of Chongming Island, an unexpected turn of events of the day before had left some of the bigger teams with homework to do as they chased redemption on the final day. That after, high-tech products German veteran Charlotte Becker ghosted into the race lead on stage two, with fellow breakaway rider Shannon Malseed five seconds back on GC, and the favourites over a minute in arrears. I'm a little bit nervous. It's, it's, I think that's normal when you have the yellow jersey. That's not happening so often. Of course, I, I will have a look on Malseed, uh, what she's doing. Um, I, yeah, because she can't take so many seconds, but then she would have to win both sprints or something. And um, yeah, I, that's going to be difficult for her too. So I think five, five seconds. I hope it's enough. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a matter of seeing how the other teams want to play it today. We've had a lot of those big sprinter teams miss out on that stage win and that GC uh, opportunity. So I think um, it's going to be some aggressive racing today. As a smaller team, we just really need to play our cards right out there and um, use energy only when we really need to. So. Although the longest of the race at 126 and a half kilometers, the final stage would offer little in terms of difficulties, 11 laps of a city circuit. The one big thing of note to happen in the opening laps was when the Wiggle High Fives Queen of the Mountains jersey wearer, Lucy Garner, lost over a minute on the pack after a minor crash which required a bike change. But the possibility of finishing outside the time cut was averted when she was safely shepherded back to the pack. The first intermediate sprint at 34.5 kilometres was taken by Georgia Bronzini, followed by Chloe Hoskin and Jolien Dorr. The second one saw Hoskin, Best Bronzini and swap pit Chilean rider Paolo Andrea Monzo third over the line. After a breakaway changed the shape of the race the day before, there was little appetite to let any escapees go. Mink Cycling Club's Ina Svenka tried her hand at 50 kilometres to go, with third placed on GC Anastasia Yekovinka going with her. But this would never be allowed to form as a threat, as Tibco SVB chased to protect Malsey's position. Australian Sarah Roy of Mitchelton Scott had a big dig at 38 kilometres to go, taking with her a quintet of riders, including Shayla Gutierrez of Silence. But, like the other attempts, it fizzled out quickly. High Tech and Tibco raised the pace as the kilometres trickled down. And, by the bell lap, the peloton was strung out in a line. There was no denying the sprinters today as the trains moved forward. Team Virtue dominating the front with a monster pull by their German powerhouse, Mike Kruger. On the final approach, it was Mitchelton Scott on the right vying with Virtue, with Wiggle High Fives wheeled on Dawes wheel, while Chloe Hoskins' Ali Cipollini positioned themselves behind Virtue. Sensing she'd be boxed in on the right, Wield used her experience to manoeuvre left before coming around the last of the Ali Cipollini lead-out riders and blazing past everyone for the win. Dor was second and Bronzini third. A much-needed win for Wiggle High Five, disappointment again for Michelton Scott and Ali Cipollini. And a GC victory in the bag for Becker. Yeah, it was really good. I think everything worked pretty well and we were relaxed and um, a bit organised, I think, as a team. Yeah, there were some attacks, but I think uh, as a team we were really in control and confident. And yeah, the last five kilometres was quite hectic and we lost each other, but we find each other again. And yeah, it was OK. The team did great today. We had a good lead out. Um, but then the last 200 metres, I couldn't find a gap on the right. So I had to stop pedalling and find a gap on the left side, and which took me... Yeah, a fraction of a second too late, I guess, and then I had to restart my sprint. So, and then Kirsten already had a gap. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a shame because I really felt strong again and I felt fast. But um, then it's a shame if you come second. I'm really, really super happy to take uh, the green jersey, and I really need to thank my team to believe in this. And I also super happy to got the third place today, beating by two the best sprinter in the world. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah. I don't know really, it's really, yeah, like you said, unexpected uh, for me, for us, uh, 
<laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a strange feeling to win a, a women's world tour race. I, it's the first time in my life, and I'm really really happy about that. And yeah, it's it's a nice feeling, of course. Confirmation of the stage results and a credible seventh in good company for Thailand's Judapit Manipan. Wheels' victory puts her in the top 10 on GC, along with Hoskins as a result of bonus seconds in the intermediate sprints. So, a fairy tale race for 34 year old Becca, with Malseed and Yekovinko rounding out the podium. Yekovinko also pulling on the best young rider's jersey. Bronzini's consistency and the opening stage win gave her the points jersey. Ghana safely taking home the Queen of the Mountains. And the impressive Mani Pan was best Asian rider, her Thailand team the best Asian team. While overall, team accolade went to Tibco SVB. Anna Vanderbregen's healthy lead in the Women's World Tour remains unchallenged, while Dor climbed into fourth spot. And Sofia Bertizzolo remains her lead at the top of the Women's World Tour youth standings, while Sylvia Persico jumps straight in at fifth. Thank <laughs> you.